हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज अखिलेश पांडे एंड आई वेलकम यू टू द फास्ट टेक रिविजन कोर्स ऑफ द कंट्रोल सिस्टम एंड द लेक्चर दैट इज गोइंग इज लेक्चर टू ऑफ चैप्टर वन ऑफ द कंट्रोल सिस्टम एंड इन दिस लेक्चर आई विल कवर द टॉपिक्स दैट इज मैंसन ऑन यूर स्क्रीन इट सेल्फ दैट इज यूनिट एम्पल्स एंड यूनिट स्टेप रिस्पॉन्स पोल्स एंड जीरोज एंड स्टेडी स्टेट वैल्यूज सो रिलेटेड टू दिस वी विल सी द कॉन्सेप्ट एज वेल एज द न्यूमेरिकल प्रॉब्लम्स दैट हैज बीन आस्ट इन द प्रीवियस गेट एग्जाम so let's start with the first topic that is uh, unit impulse and unit step response what is the meaning of these two and the uh, slide is on your screen itself so unit impulse when the statement is written in a question that uh, unit impulse response of a system is then in that statement the, the two things are given one thing is response it means output is given and the second thing unit impulse response it means the input is unit impulse so two things are given in single statement when it is said that unit impulse response unit impulse is input and the response whatever it is given that will be the output okay now unit impulse we know from uh, signals and system we have already studied that unit impulse is uh, represented in time domain as del t and its laplace transform is 1 and similarly unit step is represented in as ut and its laplace transform is 1 upon s so when we are uh, trying to find the output means response due to any unit impulse then what we are getting ys equals to axis into hs axis is of course the input and hs is a transfer function in uh, laplace terms means n as domain so when we put the uh, value that we have got means uh, if we are talking about unit impulse response then the value of axis will be 1 of course so if it is 1 <clears throat> then what will be ys ys will be of course uh, hs so the output is what output is the transfer function of the system basically so if it is said that unit impulse response is this then it is transfer function basically in s domain again if we have to find unit step response and the transfer function is given then what we will do we will multiply that transfer function with 1 by s and that and in this way we get the result so uh, this is all about the meaning of the unit impulse response and unit step response and so many questions used to be asked related to this topic so we must prepare for that and let's check one problem that has been asked in the previous previous gate exam related to that so this is the question that has been asked in the 2007 two marks question and the frequency response of a linear time invariant system is given frequency response of a system is given okay fine means this is a transfer function basically what we will do we, when we will solving the problem uh, using uh, transfer function then we will try to convert in the s domain because we know that we in the previous slide itself we learned that uh, the transfer function is what this is output upon input taken as a laplace transform means in laplace transform form okay so the step response of the system has been asked so if transfer function is given it means this is unit impulse response you can say and uh, transfer function itself is given then what we have to do to find the unit step response so unit step response means input will be now 1 by s and then we will multiply it with the transfer function that we will convert in the s domain and then we will get the final result so let's see the solution of this problem and this is the solution yeah h f is given so we will convert it in uh, first omega and then instead of j omega we will write as so h s in s domain we have got the result the transfer function now unit step response is desired it means input will be taken as uh, unit unit step and unit step the laplace transform of unit step function is 1 upon s so we will multiply the transfer function with 1 upon s and then after solving uh, taking partial fraction and so on we get the result and taking inverse laplace transform we get the result very easily 5 into 1 minus exponential minus t upon 5 so that's all uh, about this problem and uh, uh, very easy problem this type of questions has, can be asked in the upcoming exam as well so we must know the meaning of these two unit step response and unit impulse response and we must do problems related to that as well now come to the next Uh, topic that is <clears throat> poles and zeros so let's first understand the meaning of poles and meaning of zeros so concept behind poles and zeros is that if a transfer function is written in this form means uh, we have factored each and every terms in this way and, and that uh, s plus 1 s plus a2 so on so on uh, in numerator and denominator we have got s plus b1 s plus b2 and so on up to s plus bm okay so 
by seeing this uh, uh, numerator and denominator we can say easily that there will be how many number of poles will be there that will be decided by the denominator i have written in the next line of the slide poles determined as roots of denominator by taking the denominator equal to 0 we will get the roots of the denominator and that will give the num uh, poles so here we can see that m number of poles will be there and what will be the values of those poles will be minus b1 minus b2 and so on it is by uh, getting the factors if uh, it is not in a factor form then we will try to convert in that factor form and then we will get the num uh, poles the desired poles similarly we will get the zeros by taking numerator equal to 0 so basically numerator equated to 0 gives the zeros and uh, denominator equated to zeros will means value 0 will give the poles so this way we get the um, poles and zeros now how we represent on the graph so graph is what in s plane on s plane we will represent so there will be a real part of s means real axis of the s and imaginary axis of the x basically it is written as sigma and j omega so s equals to sigma plus j omega we all know so this way we represent and pole is represented by a cross sign as mentioned here minus b1 minus b2 cross with cross sign it has been represented and zero is represented by uh, dot sign so this is uh, represented as minus a1 and minus a2 so this way rep we represent zeros and poles on a graph and how we determine the poles and zeros by um, from numerator we get the zeros and from denominator we get the poles so related to this concept as well uh, some question has been asked in the previous gate exam so we must prepare for that as well let's check the question oh so before uh, going through the question we must uh, understand one more thing that is steady state value so once we will learn this then we will uh, do the problem because this concept is as well used in that question so it is steady state value what is this steady state means when we uh, take time as uh, a large value means time at infinity what will be the value of the function output the system output will be the steady state value will say will be said steady state value now when we are talking about any stable system or you can say exponentially decreasing system as shown here so at uh, infinite either it will become zero or means the steady state value will become zero or some constant it will be okay so this way we can uh, get easily the for the stable system we can get the steady state value we will later check what happens when there will be marginally stable and so on but before this we must understand that when the, uh, there is a stable system means uh, in time domain if, if we are talking about time domain then exponentially decreasing graph then some constant value of steady state we will get or zero value of steady state we will get means we will get some result okay and what about uh, in s domain if we are talking about s domains then all the poles should be in left half plane if this type of things happen then we will say that the system is stable and we can get a desired steady state value and how we will get that value so by using the final value theorem and the final value theorem is written on the screen itself limit t tends to infinity y t equals to limit s tends to 0 y s s y s this is simple very simple formula means we, we have to find the y t at t tends to infinity means at higher values then we, what we will do we will uh, derive the Laplace transform of yt as ys multiply that with s and limit s tends to 0 we will take this is the simple final value theorem so this theorem is applicable only when the graph is exponential in time domain or uh, in s domain if you are talking then all the poles in the left half plane or moreover if the system is stable then only this can be done this theorem can be used so let's check now the one problem related to the pole zero concept that we have studied just now and this steady state value concept so let's check the problem so the problem uh, uh, which has been asked in the previous gate exam 2008 two marks question and on your screen itself so a linear time invariant causal continuous time system has a rational transfer function with simple poles at s equals to minus 2 s equals to minus 4 and one simple 0 at s equals to minus 1 so two poles has been given and one zero has, has been given okay next a unit step input means uh, unit step ut is applied at the input 
of the system at steady state the output has a constant value of 1 means steady state value is also given as 1 unit step is the input now the impulse response of the system so basically we have to find the transfer function and then we will um, convert it in, into the time domain so let's check how we solve this problem so a strategy will be like this first of all we have to design the transfer function by using these poles and zeros that we have just studied that poles will be uh, put uh, in the denominator part and zeros will be put in numerator part and one constant will be multiplied with it and then we will find the transfer function using the steady state value and then after we will get the final result in the time domain so let's check the solution that is shown in the next slide so we have uh, poles as equals to minus 2 minus 4 and zeros as equals to minus 1 so we can easily uh, write the transfer function as k s plus 1 divided by s plus 2 s plus 4 now steady state value is given as 1 so uh, what uh, steady state value for unit step input is given as 1 so steady state value is 1 and input that is applied is 1 upon s in Laplace transform form so output will be basically 1 upon s means this input multiplied with this transfer function so when these two will be multiplied we will get this result and this is basically the output now applying the final value theorem and using the uh, steady state value so steady state value limit t tends to infinity equals to limit as this is from final value theorem itself and what is steady state value this is 1 so we will put instead of this instead of this we will put 1 and then after here we will uh, apply the limit as tends to 0 in this output so we get this result by putting uh, s equals to 0 in the transfer function we will get k equals to 8 so basically what we have got we have got this constant value in the transfer function so finally we have got the transfer function so transfer function is 8 s plus 1 upon s plus 2 into s plus 4 now we will do the partial fraction and then after uh, here we have done the partial fraction and then after we will convert in the time domain so that's it and that's all of uh, means problem has been solved now and this will be the correct answer so let's check the last topic that is steady state value oh sorry with steady state value we have already studied but that uh, steady state value we had uh, studied for the system which is stable or you can say the exponentially uh, in time domain exponentially decreasing function or all the poles in the left half plane but when the system will be marginally stable then what happens marginally stable means in time domain if you are talking about marginally stable it means it is a sinusoidal function and uh, if you are talking about uh, in s domain then there will be uh, conjugate poles on imaginary axis so this is the condition of the marginally stable system so it's on your screen itself you can see that this is uh, if this type of um, transfer function is there then we will say that it is a marginally stable system or in this way we can say that it is a marginally stable system or uh, marginally stable function also we can say if the output is in this way output or input is in this way so if we have uh, some function some input function like this sin omega naught t into ut then of course this system will be uh, um, sinusoidally going on up to infinity means you cannot tell what will be the uh, value steady state value because it will not be a constant value it will be still time dependent and there will be always the sinusoidal function present even if we take t tends to infinity so sin omega naught t u t is the un, uh, input hs is of course the transfer function of the system and if uh, we have to find yt then how we can find we don't means yt means steady state value of the output how we can determine it so as we know that there will be no constant value for the steady state so we cannot use the formula of the final value theorem in in this condition now if it is not constant then what will be the value so uh, we very well know that if sinusoidal input is applied it means output will must have that uh, frequency means sinusoidal output there must be a sinusoidal output now what will change the change will be only in the magnitude and its phase angle so uh, we are we have taken the output in the same way 
if it is sin omega not t ut at input then what we can write a into a means magnitude had has been multiplied with a and there is a phase change phase angle has been changed by a factor phi so we have to basically determine the value of a and phi how we can determine so it is very simple we will put this omega not means the value of the frequency in this hs means hs first of all we will represent this hs in the omega form means hj omega and then after we will put at instead of omega the value of omega not and then after we will determine its magnitude and the phase angle so this way we have determined it a equals to uh, magnitude of h omega and uh, what will be the phase angle angle of h omega at a omega equals to omega not of course omega not is what omega not is the uh, input frequency of the sinusoidal signal okay so uh, now uh, means basically what we are doing we are converting the transfer function in the polar form and with omega equals to omega not so this is the basic thing we are doing and then we are multiplying it with the input signal and then we are getting the final result so let's check one problem related to this steady state value for the marginally stable system so let's check the problem so here we have um, the question has been asked in the 2006 one mark question and the input signal is of course sin t u t or um, this is a basically not a marginally stable system the output uh, is um, not going to be constant at uh, uh, steady state means at infinite at t tends to infinity the output is not going to be constant that will be oscillating so in that case how we can determine the output um, that thing we are checking and final value theorem you cannot apply here okay so for steady state what we will do we will uh, just if it is sinus uh, sinusoidal function we will first determine the frequency of the input signal and that is of course one that frequency will be used to determine the polar form of this transfer function and then after we will just shift multiply it with the magnitude and shift its frequency that's it so let's check the solution of this question so sin t u t is the input 1 by s plus 1 is the transfer function we convert in in the omega form as j omega 1 upon j omega plus 1 and omega equals to of course 1 because the frequency is 1 so we will get this result convert in the polar form 1 upon root 2 angle minus 45 degree and what we have to do we have to just multiply the magnitude to the output 1 upon root 2 and shift the phase angle t minus 45 degree or pi by 4 so that's the uh, right answer for this question so this way we can solve when there is a sinusoidal input or exponentially means uh, cos also can be there so this type of input is there then for determining the output what we will do we will just convert the transfer function into the polar form and what uh, and we will put omega equals to omega naught omega naught is the frequency of the input so uh, so many times the questions related to this has been asked in the previous gate exam so you must prepare for this let's come to the last topic that is uh, steady state value for unstable system of course oh sorry I have not prepared because unstable system uh, for unstable system there will be no any steady state values it will be infinite of course that's why I have not prepared the slide for that so that's all for this uh, these three topics that I have discussed and this uh, that's all uh, of lecture uh, second of chapter one I will come uh, with some other topics in the next lecture thank you so much.